choosing the right car in ACC. Let's go. Let's talk about the elephant in the room, BOP. What does BOP stand for? It stands for balance of performance. It's a pretty hot topic uh, right now. I mean, mind you, it's been a hot topic for a while, but let's forget about BOP because what we need to do is we need to find a car that suits you because in the end, the fastest car is going to be the car that suits you. Let's go. Listen to this sound. Oh my. Oh, it's just awesome. I love this. This is the, to me, this is the best sounding car in this entire game. Unreal. What is it like to drive? Well, imagine yourself getting yourself into a phone booth with a pissed off ape. That is probably the only thing I can describe it. This thing is absolutely all over the place. It does weird hopping things in the corners that are that that you're not supposed to do. Is it fast? Absolutely it is. In the right hands, Porsche specialists are definitely fast with this. I mean, look at, I mean, I can't drive right now. I'm not really driving the car, so don't judge me on this. Um, the Porsche specialists are fast, but even they've given up on the car because it's just weird. It does weird things, okay? But it is fast. So again, is it beginner friendly? Absolutely not. Sound and immersion? Oh yeah. Oh, it's just awesome. I feel like I'm driving a real Porsche race car here. There is no doubt about this. I mean, just listen to this thing. Performance? Sure. It's quick in some tracks, and it's not that far off at the tracks where it's not. And overall drivability? It's definitely not easy to drive, guys. So, if this is for you, if you like this car, absolutely. All power to you. I'm all for it. Alrighty, the BMW M4, the sound, sounds neat, got like this understated kind of like grunt to it, do I like it, sure, is it my favorite, no, is this car beginner friendly, I'd say yes and no, um, I can tell you that I am struggling a little bit on this track uh, for drivability. Mind you, this is supposed to be the track where this car is super fast uh, with the right driver, obviously. Uh, someone who's used to this car. I drove it on Silverstone, and it was, um, it was definitely... I liked it better on Silverstone, I'll be honest. Performance. Overall, this car is quick. I mean, sure, again, it's got its tracks where it's really quick at, and it's got tracks where it's a little bit slower at, just like pretty much every car in this game. But is it competitive? Absolutely. I mean, one of the top drivers in this, uh, um, in this game uh, uses this car. Notable attributes about this car. It's got a kind of a weird front end in a way. Like, it, it turns in. There's no doubt that it turns in. But I feel like I'm just lacking... I don't know, I'm lacking feel through the steering wheel. Does it have that corner exit oversteer? Not so much. I mean, I'm pretty sure you could probably put a setup on it that will make it do that. But is it harsh like the AMG? No. It almost feels almost like a almost like a Le Mans style car a little bit. Obviously not with like the crazy downforce and all that, but the way that it just it doesn't feel like the car has any body roll. It's very, it's a very strange feeling. Definitely something you need to get used to if you're definitely used to the body roll of, you know, the Aston or uh, AMG or, you know, even the mid-engine cars, they feel like they have more body roll than this thing does. The way I could describe the way the front end, front end of this car feels, it's almost like the Ferrari. It's almost like the Ferrari and the, and the BMW are almost like distant cousins in a way, except one got, uh, the engine in the front and the other got the engine in the middle. All right, but to recap, is it beginner friendly? I'd say so. It's definitely not that difficult to drive. Definitely easier cars to drive for sure. The immersion factor? I don't know. I I feel like there's a little bit missing. Kind of like the sound of the car, but I don't know. The car the car feels a little strange to me. Performance is definitely quick at some tracks. And you know the tracks where it doesn't have the uh, BOP in its favor? It's not, not like it's that far off, you know? 
And drivability, I'd say it's, uh, other than that turn, um, I'd say it's drivable. I mean, I tried in a really aggressive setup with this, and it was, it was pretty pitchy. So I put a little bit safer one on, especially since I'm very new to this car. But, uh, yeah. Alrighty, on to the next one. Alright, the AMG. The mighty AMG. Listen to that V8. We don't really care about that. What we care about is how this thing can just drive over curbs like they're absolutely not even there. One of the other big topics that everyone's talking about now is how unfair it is the way this thing absorbs curbs. It's just easy. The problem is I'm, I'm a mid-engine guy, so I'm still driving this car like I have to avoid these curbs. I, I don't have to in this car, though. It does have that on-throttle kick. I mean, obviously the tires are cold, but this car does have that on-throttle kick. Because it's got a lot of grunt out of the corners, that's for sure. Is it beginner-friendly? Uh, sure. A lot of people use this car. Is it the easiest car to drive? No. But it does give you this confidence, you know, it's a big, bulky car. Feels like a big boat. But, the curbs. Oh, one. Two! Yeah, we invalidated I don't care, but look how it drives. If you did that with the Ferrari there, you would have been meeting Neil Armstrong on the moon. Immersion. On this car, it sounds awesome. Definitely feels like you're in, like, the in, in, in a V8 car. Like, there's no doubt about this. I mean, it sounds less European and more like American muscle, and if that's your thing, you're gonna love this. Performance. Well, on this track, it holds the rat lap, lap record. 139.1, I believe. It's insane. It's almost not even fair. Is it quick at all the tracks? No. But that's like every other car. But will you be competitive in this car? Sure. And when it comes to this stuff, you don't have to worry. Just drive over it. You see the uh, pissed off ape up ahead? Drive over it. It's fine. Mercedes will just drive over it. No, no big problem. It turns. It, it's basically a GT3, or basically a GT3 car, and turns into a a Dakar Rally uh, racing truck. It's kind of the mix of both worlds. Would I choose this car? I've definitely thought about it. Definitely thought about it. But I don't. I, I just, this car feels bulky, and I never really liked bulky feeling racing cars. I always have this thing that a racing car should feel light and nimble, and this is definitely not that. But one thing for sure, when the light goes green on those starts, this thing's got the grunt. You're not going to get beat down to turn one in this car. Mess up a corner a little bit. You come out of that corner a little slower than that guy who's behind you. You'll be fine. He won't he won't be able to pass you. I mean in the Audi obviously they'll, they'll drive by you at the end of the straightaway. And the uh, Ferrari at the end of very long straights they will drive by. But the thing is, you've already pulled so much out of the corner that they're just gonna be spending that time trying to uh, catch right back up to you. Okay guys, we're all done with the front engine cars. Let's move on to the mid-engine cars. The mighty Audi. Look at the top speed on this thing. Look at it. Unreal. Is this car beginner friendly? No. No. It's just not. It's not even mediocre friendly. This used to be my main car uh, three years ago uh, when I played this the first time around. And, uh,. I loved it then. Uh, set a really fast uh, time on Zolder with it. Had a lot more practice in it than I do now. I haven't really driven this car at all. But, I mean, it's pretty universally known that this car is very difficult to drive. It is very quick on some tracks, like this, like this track here, Paul Ricard. It holds the record. I think it holds like the top four, five, even maybe even six places on the uh, on on the leaderboards. Mount Panorama is another one. It holds the record. I think again, it literally locks out all the top five positions. 
But again, you have to be able to drive this car. It is very difficult to drive. Immersion factor. Well, I think it sounds pretty awesome. I've always liked that, like, high-pitched, you know, that almost Formula One sound, you know? Jesus. It definitely doesn't like bumps. That's for sure. I have, uh, like a semi-aggressive setup on this car. But it definitely doesn't like the bumps. It's very hoppy. It almost... I don't know. Whoa. I almost feel like in some way... It almost feels like the Lamborghini in a way. So the Lamborghini is not quite as harsh as this. Don't mind the lap times, guys. I'm just driving around and talking here. Whoa! This car, from what I understand, uh, since Audi is pulling out of uh, GT3 racing, I believe. Um, so this car, even though it has some really good POP, uh, it's a little OP'd on some tracks. Uh, right now, usually when the uh, cars pull out in real life, usually what's going to happen is these cars, they won't uh, be uh, updated anymore, obviously. So I think the car is probably going to die. Um, that's at least from what I've read. Uh, so there's that, but overall, only very, very select few people can drive this car really, really fast. I mean, look at me. I'm at a 157. It's absolutely terrible. In the Ferrari, I can do uh, low 53s, which isn't super quick either, but it's definitely quicker than this. So um, that should tell you everything you need to know right there. I mean, mind you, I have more time in the Ferrari. But I also had a lot of time um, in, it, in in this car's predecessor, uh, in the original uh, in the in the in the original Audi, no no Evo or anything. But look at that top speed! Oh yeah, look at me. I'm driving like garbage. I just don't know the car. But I mean, it's universally known that this thing is impossible to drive. So there's uh, it's not. I wouldn't say it's impossible because obviously there's people that can that are very quick in this thing. Alrighty, the Ferrari 296. Listen to that sound. Sounds like a bunch of sewing machines going off, honestly. Sound is, uh, um, yeah, I, I don't like the sound. It sounds kind of weak. You know, Ferraris are supposed to, you know, have that wow factor, you know, when you, when you step on the accelerator. This just doesn't have that. But is it beginner friendly? Oh, it absolutely is. Probably the easiest car to drive in the entire game. If you are just starting out with this game and you're frustrated with other cars and you find it extremely difficult, drive this car. It feels planted. Front feels planted. It adds a little understeery, I guess, right? But uh, that definitely helps. The back, it's very, pretty hard to lose the back end in this car for sure. I mean, we can definitely put some setups on this car to make it, uh, you know, very, very uh, pitchy and all the things that uh, we don't like, but definitely beginner friendly. I think we touched on the sound already with the immersion. The car, it feels... I don't know, it feels kind of dull to drive, I guess. I do get good feedback uh, from the steering wheel, for sure. Performance? Yeah, it's not the fastest car in the game. Um, but it's 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 still good. Uh, this car, uh, I think. Uh, I mean, sorry, not this car. This track uh, holds the record here. I think it holds the first ten spots, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so there's that. Um, it's not the super quickest at all the other tracks, but you're definitely um, you're definitely not going to be the slowest guy on the racetrack. It's a good car. Um, this was my main car in the in, in the last season that I that I drove. So I have a little bit of experience. I never drove it on Barcelona up until now, to be quite honest. Things I don't like about it, the starts are terrible. You're gonna you're gonna get passed. You're gonna be battling with the cars behind you if they're not Ferraris. And I mean every car. That's not a Ferrari you're, you're gonna be battling with on the start. Uh, you can do this, you, you can do the brake boosting uh, uh, trick. It helps a little bit, but it's just you're starting next to an AMG or uh, or anything with any sort of oomph, forget about it, you're done. Curbs? 
I don't even know if there are even springs on this car, I'll be honest. On the setup screen, it says there's springs. When you drive over them, it's just, it's like driving a go-kart. It's just bang and boom. So, I mean, on the tracks where you do have to use the curves, you definitely uh, can go quick. It's just you have to, you have to drive the car uh, with a completely different line. I mean, compared to the AMG, good luck. Over the course of an hour race, be very difficult to be consistent with this car on a uh, track like uh, Imola where, where you really have to use the curbs or um, Monza uh, what who else Zolder forget about Zolder the uh, first and second chicane good luck with it but definitely a car for the beginner definitely a very good car you're not gonna be slow and it's easy to drive there are some setups you'll get though, uh, make this car almost undrivable. Alrighty guys, on to the next one. Alrighty, the Lamborghini. Listen to the sound. Love this sound. Sounds so good. I mean, every Lamborghini in the history of Lamborghini sounds awesome, so... I definitely like the way it sounds. Dash is getting a little bit dated. Kind of being picky right now because who cares it's a race car but either way i'd mention it beginner friendly i'd say so i mean i don't have that much experience in this car but it is very stable like um it's got good balance front to back personally i think overall i think this is probably one of uh the better cars in the game if you take into a if you take into account uh performance drivability things like that and it definitely has some notable tracks where it's fast, for sure. This is a uh, this is this is a good track for the Lamborghini. Uh, Suzuka uh, holds a crazy lap record there. But yeah, no, I'm liking this. O on honestly, I would consider this car to be quite honest. It has, with the balance, it does. It still, to me, there is this weird thing in the steering. All of a sudden, when you come from off center on this car, there is. There is some sort of lightness uh, to the car. I mean, it could be a setup thing. I mean, mind you, I haven't played with the setup. I've done just a few laps in this car, right? So, uh, but I haven't felt that with uh, any of the other cars yet. But man, the balance, like coming out of that first corner there. I mean, when, when I drove the Ferrari here, I was definitely much quicker in the Ferrari than I am in this. Um, but... The Ferrari coming out of the first corner is uh, is deadly. This car is definitely good over the curves. Uh, obviously not like the AMG or anything, but way better than the Ferrari. It has good starts, and I, it feels like at least when I race against the Lamborghinis, uh, and then I'm in, just to give you context, I'm either in a Ferrari or a McLaren. This car has, this Lamborghini has good grunt coming out of the corners, which is super well, for me, it's super important. Alrighty guys, let's get on to the next one. Alrighty, the McLaren. The most loved, hated, most talked about car right now in ACC. If you're driving it, you love it. If you got to race against it, you hate it. Is the car beginner friendly? I would say no. It's got quite a bit of uh, corner exit uh, oversteer. It's got that kick, and it just comes out of nowhere as soon as that turbo kicks in. So you got to be really good at keeping the turbo spooled up. Sound and immersion. Well, anything sounds better than the Ferrari. Some people love the sound of the McLaren. I'm a little on the fence. I don't think it's the greatest sounding car. It's got this, like, really aggressive like growl to it performance it's fast overall it's definitely the it's probably the fastest car in the game right now i mean the audi is also up there too i mean the mclaren does have its slow tracks uh this is one of its fast tracks for sure uh monza it's quick uh where else is it quick spa is extremely quick but overall the drivability of this car I like it personally. Uh, the front end feels uh, very planted, but you gotta always anticipate the low speed corner uh, kick. But I don't know. I just uh, right now it's my favorite car. 
and honestly guys I know people laugh at me but it's my favorite car because I like the way it drives uh, not because it's quick and not because it's probably the fastest car overall in the game right now uh, I know you, most people won't believe me when I say it but I do honestly enjoy driving this car I feel I definitely feel more connected with this car than I did with the Ferrari for sure notable things about this car other than the uh, on throttle oversteer. It has funny brakes. The brakes are not very good overall. And I find that sometimes they don't work. I know other people have complained about it from what I saw from some of the streams I watch. That all of a sudden you go into the corner or you start braking for the same corner at the same brake marker and all of a sudden the brakes don't work. It's, it's kind of weird. I don't know if it's like a glitch in the game. Uh, probably because I can't imagine that in real life. Uh, that the racing driver, or the, the uh, guys who drive this car in real life would uh, uh, put up with that, because that's kind of scary. How does it take curbs? Decently. Definitely better than the Ferrari. Definitely not an AMG. But it's pretty on par with most cars in this game, or most mid-engine cars in this game. Alrighty, that wraps up the uh, uh, testing of the cars. And here are my overall thoughts of this car. I just want to start off with a side note that uh, these are purely my own opinions. Uh, your results may vary. They will vary. Uh, try the, try all the cars out for yourself. See which one you like best. Uh, this video is more geared towards like the beginner uh, stuff like that. So that uh, they can so that you can figure out uh, which uh, car is good for you. Now, with that being said, so here's my opinion on uh, which cars are good in different categories. So as far as drivability goes, uh, being a good uh, beginner friendly car, I think I already mentioned it. Obviously, the Ferrari 296 definitely go with that for overall car. If I were to balance like everything out that I talked about in these videos, I would probably pick the Lamborghini, to be honest. And as far as overall outright performance and pace, Definitely the McLaren and the Audi if you can if you can drive the Audi. The McLaren is easier to drive than the Audi. That's why I would like to pick the McLaren as the overall right now in the current uh, 1.9.5 uh, 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 build of this uh, game. So I uh, hope you guys enjoyed that video. If this video helped you in any way or if it was entertaining in any way, uh, honestly, uh, please please hit that like button. Uh, comment below. Tell me which car that you think is uh, the best car uh, for you, and maybe even tell me why. I'd I'd I'd, I'd actually re really like to know. And uh, if you really did like the video and you're liking the content on the channel, please please consider subscribing. It's uh, really helping. And uh, we'll see you guys on the next video or live stream. Have a good one. See you later.